great to have you with us here on a Thursday night and we witnessed one of the most difficult days yet in this pandemic. The deadliest 24 hours since this pandemic began, the highest number of new cases since this pandemic began. Tonight, California for one, telling residents there to prepare for potential lockdowns once again, where ICUs are near capacity. And late today, President-elect Joe Biden making news, saying he has now asked Dr. Anthony Fauci to stay on in the same role in the Biden administration. And Biden saying when he's inaugurated, he'll ask Americans to wear masks for 100 days to help save lives. Tonight, more than 14 million Americans have now tested positive, more than 192,000 new cases in just the past 24 hours. And as I mentioned, more than 100,000 now fighting this virus in the hospital. Deaths now surpassing the peak last spring. At least 275,000 American lives now lost. Tonight, California's governor with that warning that there could very well be new lockdowns in areas where ICUs are close to capacity. Most businesses will shut down, including in-person dining and hair salons. Late today, Delaware's governor announcing a stay-at-home advisory and issuing a universal mask mandate. In parts of Ohio tonight, they're now asking for more mobile morgues. We have it all covered this evening, including new reporting as well on Pfizer's vaccine and concerns they had over the supply chain. So we begin here with ABC's Whit Johnson right here in New York. Tonight, the governor of California says he is pulling the emergency brake, warning the state's 40 million residents to brace for likely lockdowns in just days. We do not anticipate having to do this once again, but we really all need to step up. We need to meet this moment head on, and we need to do everything we can to stem the tide, to bend the curve. A three-week stay-at-home order triggered when ICU capacity in a region falls below 15 percent, many areas right on the edge. Businesses like bars, wineries, hair salons would close. Any in-person schools could stay open, along with limited retail and takeout at restaurants. As California braces for potential lockdown, President-elect Biden making news, saying he has talked to Dr. Anthony Fauci, asking him to stay on. I ask him to stay on in the exact same role he's had for the past several presidents, and I ask him to be a chief medical advisor for me as well and be part of the COVID team. And the president-elect saying his inclination on Inauguration Day is to ask Americans to wear a mask for 100 days to help slow the virus and save lives. In the first day I'm inaugurated to say I'm going to ask the public for 100 days to mask, just 100 days to mask, not forever, 100 days. And I think we'll see a significant reduction. This as the nation plunges into the darkest days of the pandemic, more than 2,700 American lives lost in just 24 hours. And this stunning admission from the director of the CDC. This nation was severely underprepared for this pandemic. And I think we have to call it the way it is. Morgues around the country starting to run out of room. Stark County, Ohio, bringing in a refrigerated trailer as COVID deaths climb. Over the uh, Thanksgiving weekend, we became completely filled out here at the morgue. And hospitals bursting at the seams. At least 100,000 people now hospitalized with COVID, a new record. And it's because of this virus, okay? If my beds are full of COVID patients, I can't deal with those patients that need me when they come in with acute heart failure. We don't have staffing for us, so therefore we don't have beds. The CDC extending its travel warning through the end of the year, pleading with people to stay home. As cases surge, the holiday season rush on testing continues. In this drive through testing site in Norwalk, Connecticut, many of the cars here are lined up hours before the gates even open. Now you're seeing the numbers tick up again, correct? Absolutely. The numbers are going back up, and we know that that's because uh, people were exposed and they're finding out through contact tracing uh, that they might be at risk. In Oklahoma, ICU nurse Lizanne Jennings lost her mother and husband to the virus within three days of each other. I'm an ICU nurse and I help all these people and I couldn't save my own family. Lizanne laying with her husband Dennis in his final moments. I'm gonna let you go now, okay? And he said, uh huh. And I said, you're gonna, you're gonna be in peace. We have to remember these families every night here, and Witt joins us live. Again this evening, and we know late today, with that we learned President-elect Joe Biden was also asked if he would take the vaccine and when. 
David, the president-elect Joe Biden says if Dr. Anthony Fauci tells him it's safe that he would get the vaccine and he'd be happy to do it publicly following the model of his predecessors, three former presidents, Obama, Bush and Clinton, all reportedly saying they would be willing to get it publicly as well. This is all an effort to try to communicate with the American public that the vaccine would be safe and critical to ending this pandemic. David. All right, Witt Johnson live here in New York leading us off with thank you and now to the massive task of rolling out the vaccine and convincing Americans and really people all over the world that it is safe. The Wall Street Journal first reporting today that Pfizer had initially wanted a larger rollout but had concerns, problems with their supply chain. Tonight, Pfizer indicating this will not affect the doses expected here in the U.S. by the end of the year. ABC's Gio Benitez tonight with late reporting. Tonight, as the first doses of this life-saving vaccine are distributed, that news about Pfizer supply just moments ago. The Wall Street Journal reporting Pfizer already dealt with early supply chain obstacles. The company slashed its initial projections of doses in half this year, from 100 million to 50 million doses worldwide, after finding raw materials in production that didn't meet its standards. Pfizer stressing the problems have been fixed and will still hit its target of delivering 20 million doses in the U.S. this month. Tonight, Dr. Anthony Fauci raising alarms, saying the U.K. cut corners and rushed the approval of Pfizer's vaccine. They kind of ran around the corner of the, uh, of the marathon <laughs> and joined it <laughs> in the last mile. He later apologized, but hoping to convince Americans the vaccine is safe, Fauci saying the FDA is carefully reviewing the data. If we had jumped over the hurdle here quickly and inappropriately to gain an extra week or a week and a half, I think that the credibility of our regulatory process would have been damaged. States and cities preparing for the biggest and most complicated vaccine rollout in American history. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo today unpacking a sample box of Pfizer's vaccine, which must be stored at minus 94 degrees, holding up a vial, each containing five doses. The box can only stay open for no more than 90 seconds. This is the weapon that is going to win the war. And that is the light at the end of the tunnel, right? New York City officials say 50 hospitals have the cold storage capacity to store a total of at least 1.5 million doses. The other Herculean challenge, convincing Americans to get vaccinated. We need to be very transparent um, with uh, patients. Dr. Victoria Smith participated in the Pfizer trial in Louisiana. One of the reasons why I wanted to participate was to uh, be a model of participation and have my own example be uh, a model of, of the safety of the vaccine and the process. And tonight, convincing people is a priority, but delivering the vaccine will be a challenge like never before. This is the biggest logistical challenge that the industry in general has ever faced. ABC News getting an inside look at United's cold storage facility at Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The vaccines will be in refrigerated shipping containers, and those can be stored in even bigger refrigerators like this. Fascinating look today from Gio, and he joins us live from Chicago's O'Hare Airport. And Gio, I wanted to get back, though, to that reporting about Pfizer's concerns over a supply chain issues. The company tonight stressing that those concerns uh, have been resolved, saying Pfizer will deliver the number of doses it promised here in the U.S. by the end of the year. Yeah, that's right, David. Pfizer had some early manufacturing issues, but they say they corrected that months ago and that they're still on track to deliver those 20 million doses in the U.S. by the end of the year. Of course, that's if the FDA gives them that green light, and that could happen within just a few weeks, David.